Hi, it's Chester at Blue PK and Computer Training. And in this video, we're going to look at how to create scatter graphs in Microsoft Excel. So scatter graphs explore the relationship between two sets of data. A good example is looking at the relationship between the top temperature on a particular day and the number of, say, ice creams that are sold. Now to create the chart, you want to start by selecting the data that you want to display in it. So to start with, we'll just deal with the temperature column and the ice cream sales column. We do have a date column, but that's irrelevant to our chart. To select those sales, start by selecting the column headings and then use the key combination, control shift down arrow key. Control backspace to get back to the top. Once you've selected the data, go up to the insert tab on your ribbon and there are various chart options here. You can go to recommended charts and Excel will automatically work out that this is data suitable for a scatter graph. If I select that option, click on OK, I get my scatter graph. I'll just delete that. The other option back on the insert tab is to go straight to this scatter graph menu and you can choose your scatter graph there. So either method will give you the same result. Now, one thing to notice with your data is the first column in your data is used for the horizontal or the x-axis and subsequent columns so we've only got one other column here is used for the y-axis the vertical axis so you need to make sure that you have your columns the correct way round for your chart now once you've got your chart you may want to make some changes to it for example you might want to show axes titles and the easiest way of doing that is to use this little plus button top right of the chart. And there is the option for axis titles. If you tick that button, you'll get two boxes, one for the vertical axis, one for the horizontal. Now to change the text in these boxes, it's simply a matter of over typing what's there. If I click outside it though, there is a slightly more efficient way of doing it. What you can do is select the box, go up to your formula bar, type in equals and then click into the column heading so for us that's b1 and you can see it brings that text in so i can do the same for the vertical axis go up to my formula bar type equals and then click into c1 and if i had a cell that contained a chart title i could refer to that cell for this element here but what i'm going to do is actually type in my chart title so ice cream sales versus temperature now one thing you might want to change with this chart is where the horizontal axis crosses the vertical axis we've got a whole load of wasted space over here to make that change your best bet is to double click down here on one of these axis values that will open up the format axis task pane on the right of your screen. Now, if you don't see these options here, make sure that you have the axis options button selected at the top here, and you may need to expand axis options there. Hopefully though, all these options will be displayed by default. Now, where it says bounds here, you've got a minimum setting, which is currently zero. Well, what we're going to do is set that to 15. You can see that makes better use of the space in our chart. Another thing you might want to do with your scatter graph is show a trend line. If I just drag this over a little bit, I'm going to go back to this chart elements button and there is the option for a trend line. You can see it's drawn through those data points and that is Excel's attempt at best fit. Now to see the settings for your trend line, uh, double click it in your chart and that will bring up the format trend line task pane and you can see that there are various options for your trend line so it's assumed here a linear growth in sales as temperature increases if you thought that your graph was showing exponential growth in sales then you could choose this option here it's not making a lot of difference to our trend line there and you've got these other options as well if we look further down this task pane you can see an option down here display equation and chart you can see it here and obviously the equation changes depending on the type of trend line that you've applied. You can also show the R squared value on your chart. The closer that value is to one, 
the better the fit for the trend line. Now we have a few outlying values here, so that's why we're a fair way off a perfect one. Another option is to use these forecast settings. So based on historic data, I could forecast forward to 40 degrees centigrade to get an idea of how many ice creams I would be likely to sell. So what I would need to do is work out what my top temperature is within my data. And you can see that that is 32.8. So 7.2 degrees would take me to 40 degrees. With my trend line selected, I'm going to forecast forward by 7.2 periods. And as you can see, it extends out the trend line to 40 degrees on the X axis. And on the Y axis, I can see that I'm gonna sell just under 160 ice creams. I can calculate the exact value for this forecast at 40 degrees. Let me just zoom out a little bit and move my chart out of the way. So if I create a little table here for forecasting, I've got temperature and sales and we'll say 40 degrees. And to forecast the sales, I can use one of these forecast functions. Now I'm using a linear trend line here, so I use forecast.linear. The first argument is X. What is the X value you want to forecast for? Well, that's our temperature of 40 degrees, comma. Uh, known Ys are your ice cream sales. I'd click into C2, control shift down arrow key, control backspace, comma, and known Xs, I'd click into B2, control shift down arrow key, control backspace. Then I close the brackets, press enter, and you can see I get a value there, 156 or 157 ice cream sales. Another thing I could do to this chart is include the burger sales values. And that'd be fairly easy to do. I'm gonna zoom out again. What I'm actually gonna do is just drag this border that you can see around the ice cream sales column. If that doesn't appear for you, make sure you have the chart selected. And then from that bottom right-hand corner, drag to the right to include your burger sales. And it will create that additional series in your chart. And you can add a trend line to that. and you could also forecast forward to 40 degrees. So now I need a legend on my chart to differentiate between the blue data and the orange data. In my chart elements menu, I'm just gonna choose legend and then reposition the legend. Let's make the chart just a little bit bigger. Now if I then included the pie sales in my chart, things get a little bit ugly. There's not such a direct relationship between the pie sales and the temperature on the day. So if you did want to show a scatter graph for pie sales, you might be better showing it in a different chart. What I'll do is I'll just exclude that data series from my chart. We might be better having an individual chart for each series. So I'll just include the ice cream sales in this chart and I can get rid of the legend. And then I'll just make this slightly smaller. And then what I'm gonna do is create two copies of this chart. Copy this, click outside the chart and paste, then click somewhere else and paste again. And I've got three versions of the chart. Now I'll just reposition these. My first chart's okay, that's showing ice cream sales. The second chart, however, wants to show burger sales. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna change the column that it's picking up the Y values from. I can do that by just placing my mouse pointer over that blue border and dragging. And now I'm picking up the burger sales. I need to change this heading. And then I can do the same for this third chart. I'm gonna drag that blue border over to the pie sales column and change my heading accordingly. You can see the R value on this particular trend line is very, very low. So this trend line is fairly meaningless. I'm actually going to delete it and go to my plus button up here and delete the trend line. There is no obvious relationship here between pie sales and temperature, 
but for burger sales and ice cream, there definitely is. If you want these charts to automatically update as you add new records, then what you need to do is house your data in an Excel table. Now you can do this retrospectively. If I just click anywhere in my data and go up to insert on the ribbon and then click on this table button. What it'll ask you to do is just confirm the range of sales that you want to include in your table. And you also have this option for my table as headers. I do have headers, so I'll keep that ticked and I'll click on okay. Now, what this will mean is if I add another date, so let's add the 1st of June, 2020 to my table. I'm gonna add a temperature. Now I'm gonna make it pretty hot. Let's go for 38 degrees. And I'm gonna say I sold 150 ice creams. Now what you'll see is that, that that value has automatically appeared in the ice cream sales chart. If I go for burgers, say I sold 130, you can see that value also appears in the chart. And so it would for pie sales, let's say 50. The value appears down there. If it is data that you're gonna regularly add to, then it's very beneficial to house the data within an Excel table. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully you found it useful. If you have, please subscribe and I'll see you next video.